Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So this week I have two things to show. There's this CGA graphics demo that I've been working on and a little bit later in the video I have a new Amstrad PC1640 which I purchased uh, which has some really interesting features which I'll show towards the end so stick around for that. So first this demo, it's a tetrahedron sort of tumbling through space and you're looking at it through a sliding window which is moving around the screen. And you'll notice that it looks a little bit like uh, the really early movies that used to flick it quite a lot because they were very low frame rate. But it turns out it's actually not the frame rate here that's causing the flicker. And I'll explain what's going on in just a moment. Uh, but first I want to talk about what is causing the frame rate itself, which is about 10 frames a second. And that is the coordinates for the corners of the tetrahedron. They need to be computed as the thing tumbles through space. And uh, of course that requires floating point arithmetic. Now this is running on an original IBM PC at 4.77 MHz with an 8088 CPU and the 8088 had no floating point unit in it. It wasn't too much later that Intel put these inside the CPU. So there were two options that you had basically. The first was you could use a math emulation library, so just a piece of software which would convert floating point computations into integer arithmetic and emulate the floating point. And that's really slow, so the Borland math library that comes with the compiler that I used uh, was four or five times slower than the demo that you're looking at at the moment. And so I used the second option which is to use a floating coprocessor. So in this case it's an 8087 floating point coprocessor and this is much faster for computing the sines and cosines that are required to compute the rotations here. So there's two sines and two cosines per iteration here. Now the interesting thing is, uh, there is a way around this. So, in the demo scene, uh, when they do demos that require rotations, they just compute big sine and cosine tables. They just make them sufficiently finely divided so that they have lots of angles to choose from. And they just compute a big table of those and store them in memory and just look them up when they need them. And that's much faster than computing them on the fly. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to do the math on the fly here just so you can see what the result looks like. Uh, so that's actually the bottleneck in this computation uh, and it is the reason for the frame rate which is around 10 frames a second here. So what's actually causing the flicker then if it's not the frame rate? Well it turns out that uh, the screen is blank, well in that case it was blank because there's a blanking routine to save the phosphors on the monitor. Um, this was necessary with old CRT tubes, uh, but that's not the blanking that was causing the flickering. The blanking that's causing the flickering is because you have to blank the lines before you redraw them in their new position. And so there's some period of time during which the lines are black. And that leads the eye to believe that there's a flicker going on, because indeed there is. So how would you improve that? Obviously you can't just pre-compute all the pixels on the lines. Uh, there are hundreds of positions of each line and there are hundreds of pixels on each line. Uh, so there's way too much data to pre-compute everything and it would just take too long as well. So there is a way around it, um, but it comes at a cost. So what you can do is you can draw the lines into a buffer in main memory instead of straight into graphics memory. And that means that you can do all the computation where the lines have to be black before you redraw them off screen. And so you never see black lines. Uh, you only see the purple lines. Uh, but the cost is you then have to copy that data into the screen memory every iteration. And of course that's expensive, it costs a lot, and it would slow the frame rate down. So ironically, the flicker would go away uh, but the frame rate would be slower. So there's a balancing act going on there between the two different approaches. So the only other thing you could do here would be to speed up the line drawing algorithm. And I don't believe that's really possible. 
Uh, so the line drawing algorithm here is one that I wrote, and it's uh, a number of times faster than the ball and C uh, line drawing algorithm that comes with the compiler, which is already quite good. Uh, so I use a lot of tricks. I've talked about this in a previous video where I use short jumps instead of long jumps, and I put everything into registers instead of copying to and from main memory all the time. And I use a lot of bit twiddling to make the arithmetic really fast. So there's not really very much you could do to get a faster line drawing over them. And bear in mind that the line drawing here is not just drawing a straight line, but it's drawing a clipped straight line. It's only drawing the pixels that are actually inside the bounding box. So this is a very complicated algorithm. And if you want to take a look at it, there's a link in the description to the source code. Uh, the code for the lines themselves is in cga.asm, it's in assembly language. Uh, and this is very, very complicated code. If you want something a little bit simpler, I actually wrote uh, a simpler version of the line drawing uh, just for this week's uh, episode. And you can find that in cga2.asm. So what I did there is I took the line drawing algorithm directly from Wikipedia, it's called Bresnaham's line drawing algorithm, and I took the integer version that's exactly as it is there in the Wikipedia article, and I wrote uh, an assembly language version of just that algorithm. So the fast version that I have here, that uses some other tricks like drawing two pixels at a time instead of one, and uh, doing a lot of tricks to uh, get the layout of the CGA memory under control. Uh, so I don't do that, all of those tricks in the simple version, and so it's a little bit slower, but actually it's around 80% of the speed of this, so it's still no slouch. Uh, so check that out if you're interested, and uh, you'll be able to see how to draw reasonably fast lines uh, for a demo like this. So basically to summarize, if you wanted to speed up the frame rate, you would uh, cache all of the rotations, the sines and cosines that you need. And if you wanted to speed up the flickering, get rid of the flickering, you would use a different animation technique. Uh, I don't think that you could speed up the line drawing itself, which is actually what's causing the flicker here, because the lines have to be redrawn after they're black, and that takes some time. Uh, so that's basically it for the demo. Um, hopefully you found that interesting. And uh, leave a like below if you enjoyed uh, the video so far. But I've got one other thing to show you before we go, and that is the Amstrad PC 1640 that I purchased during the week. Uh, it has some really interesting features, and I think it's really worth showing off. It certainly gave me quite a retro rush when I turned it on. So this is the Amstrad 1640 that I purchased and you can see it's a single drive model and so it would have had originally one floppy drive which is the one on the right uh, it's been upgraded later with another and as you can see it has also a hard drive present in fact it's a Seagate ST11 hard drive so when I purchased this I had no idea whether the hard drive itself would actually work but lo and behold uh, it seems to function just perfectly so yeah, it even has some software on it uh, from the previous user. And so that was one of the reasons I bought this machine. It didn't have a keyboard or a mouse with it, so the guy who sold it wasn't able to test it. Uh, so he didn't know whether anything was working. Uh, but uh, I had some hints that the drive was working when it said ST11 ready on that first screen there in the photographs that he had. So I was really delighted to find the drive worked. So the other reason I bought this machine uh, is because of the really cool floppy bezel that there is here. Uh, so these are really rare. I had a look around online and I, it was really hard to find bezels that looked that nice for the aftermarket floppy drives. And I think you could probably go years and years before one would come up uh, that you could purchase. Uh, so, and you certainly can't buy them individually uh, for this machine. Uh, so that was uh, one reason to buy the thing. The other reason I wanted to, to buy this was because the contrast knob on my other 1640 doesn't work, and so I was interested to see whether I could get a monitor that had a working contrast knob. So let me just turn that now, and I'll show you what happens. 
Well, as you can see, absolutely nothing happens when I turn the contrast knob, and so I was a little bit disappointed about that. It seems like this is a common fault in these machines, or so I thought. Uh, so, obviously, one of the first things I did was run some of the software that's on this, and there was this mysterious program, WSX, uh, on here, and wow, I got a real retro rush when I saw this WordStar. Uh, it's an early word processor which I used to use back in the day, and I haven't seen this for decades. Uh, and so it comes up in color, like this, and I thought, oh, well, I'll try the contrast knob again. I'm not even sure why I tried it, but look what happens. So you can see that the colors actually change slightly, at least the red does here. Uh, when you turn the contrast knob. And uh, so this made me wonder whether the contrast knob's not faulty at all, and it just doesn't do what I think it does. And in fact, that's right. So I went over to my old uh, PC1640 uh, and tried out exactly the same thing, and in fact, it works just fine. It really just doesn't work in black and white mode, it only works in color mode, and all it really does is change some of the colors. And I'll show you a little bit later, um, ex you know, exactly what happens. Uh, but anyway, whilst we're here, let's have a look at this uh, word processor. So this is how it comes up. Uh, for, you know, if you've used it back in the day, this will give you quite a retro rush to see this. Um, it was a, a very nice word processor, and certainly much easier to use than, say, uh, the MS-DOS Edlin program, which was just really, really, really difficult to use. Uh, so that's basically uh, all there is to the WordStar. You can save changes and edit documents on here. I remember you know, hooking this up to a dot matrix printer back in the day and uh, you know having really a lot of fun with uh, printing stuff off. So let's have a look at what else is on this machine. Uh, there's a program called Skyglobe, which is an astronomy program. Um, I actually happen to be an amateur astronomer, but I think there are probably better programs available now. But it's still a program I've never seen running uh, on one of these machines, and so it was kind of interesting to see this. Uh, so it's a planetarium, and it, you, know, you can set it up to show you what stars are visible in the sky um, at a given time. Uh, so the other thing I tried in here was the contrast knob in here, and the effect is much more dramatic. Let me show you what happens. So you can see that virtually all the colors there change when you run the contrast knob on this machine. And uh, so it, the contrast knobs on these do work, uh, it's just that they function a little bit differently than you would expect. I've noticed other people complaining about them not working as well, and I wonder whether they also have the same sort of issue, uh, that it's, it really just changes the colors. So yeah, that's basically the new machine, and uh, that's all I wanted to show you this week. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this and found it interesting. Um, I'm sure this machine will feature in a later video. It's certainly got to be cleaned up. It has a lot of marks and scratches on it. Uh, but that's it for this week. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye!